Hi, this is Dustin with ProAVSchool.com. Somebody emailed me asking how they could create a panel, a Crestron touch panel, that has buttons that the user can edit. So I just wanted to create this quick video and show how to do it. Um, this is the end result here. It's just an X panel right now, but it would be a, a typical panel. It's a PSW 550. Um, and what I've got here is four different buttons. And the text in these buttons is actually stored in a text file on a 3 series processor in NVRAM. I've written a little module that I'll include with this video um, that will help. I was trying to explain it earlier in another video that I was going to post and I realized it's a bit too complicated so it's easier for me to just give you the file, let you play around with it and try to make it do what you need it to do. Um, and I'll just show you how you, how you kind of connect it. So basically the way this works is you press press on a button to change it, it'll update the text below, and I can change this to something new, update it, and it'll keep that even through a reboot. Um, you can see again here, I can change it back pretty easily. Now this uh, text input field is actually kind of interesting. On an actual panel, when you put a text input field in, when you click on it and give it focus, um, a keyboard will pop up, sort of like an iPhone or an Android device, and it will let you enter it directly on the panel. That's a function of the embedded keyboard on the panel. Works really well, and you don't have to worry about you know capitalization and stuff because the keyboard handles all that. The only thing is I can't simulate it. So on an X panel, it's basically just something where you, you click on it and you can select it and type. It's a little bit different experience. You'll want to try it on a real panel. Um, so let's jump to the VTP for um, the vision tools. So let's jump to the VTP file. And you'll see it's very basic here. I've got four buttons, one, two, three, four, with press join of digital press join of one through four, and also the indirect text serial join of one through four. Um, this is my indirect text field, and I'll just show you where that is here on the smart graphics controls. It's basically here, this text entry. And all I've done here is I've given it two different joins, indirect text serial join nine. That's kind of the input. When you select the button, that's what's pushed to it, so it shows here. And then whatever you edit comes out as serial join 10. And I've got update as a separate button that's join 10 digital. Now you could have the keyboard, um, on the, see this enter, press, digital, join, you could put that as 10. Since I don't have the actual on-screen keyboard, I just put it as a separate button just to make things simpler. Let's flip to the simple code here. I'll just close this out and show you how the panel is connected. It's very simple because we don't have much connections. So I've got the four presses here, um, the update on 10. There's no analogs. The serial, the four names of the buttons. And this is the text feeding that text input field. And new text is the text you want to change. So where that comes out here is all in this custom text database. This is a custom module in Simple Plus. And basically what the way it works is when you press one of the buttons to edit them, it changes the selected button. And that's an analog value. So I'm just driving that with an initialize. So the presses feed that. Um, it doesn't do anything until you actually update. And this update here is that, that press, uh, what was it, press 10 on the panel. Um, new text, that's coming right from the text entry field. Uh, file path, this is driven, the way I did this module, file path is a, you have to drive it with a serial send, um, backslash, backslash, nvram, backslash, backslash, custom.txt. You can name it whatever .txt or .dat or something. Um, the reason there's two backslashes is the first one is an escape character to escape the second one because backslash is kind of a, a special character. Um, the only other thing that I've done here is I put a five second delay after boot to, to drive that signal. I was having trouble because the module wasn't initialized right at boot time. You could also drive it from uh, under system monitor. I think it's, uh, sorry, I always get this wrong, system control. There's program one start, program two start. You could drive it off of this. I don't like doing that because if you move it to different processors or put it in a different slot, it's dependent on which, which slot you programmed, and I don't like having that dependency. It's another point where you can do it. You can be really busy and 
just forget that that's what you have to change. So I, I like to keep the code where you can kind of put it wherever you want. It's not going to cause any problems. Um, the only other thing that I had to do that's kind of special here is this custom serial buffer module that I made. Um, I found with the regular serial buffer, it will only propagate if you regenerate the signal. Even with make string permanent, if I'm trying to push something through a buffer, it doesn't work. So basically this custom serial buffer is, it has a serial in and a serial out, and it only passes it when you when you press the button. I'll include this module as well. It's, it's very simple. And I have that. Basically whenever you press one of the buttons, it'll feed that button's text to the selected button text. Selected button text is what's driving this when you see it pop up with the current name there. So now I'll just very briefly show you what this module looks like. I'm not going to go through it in depth because I will include it here. Um, it's got all those inputs we talked about. And basically what it does is it stores, let's see where I've got it here. In the help file you can see it has 20 slots for 100 character strings to be stored and you can update them on the fly by changing the analog number and putting a new input text. The way it stores it on the back end is very simple, um, pro oh, not a protocol, it's a, I'm trying to think of the word, let's call it a protocol for now because I can't think of the word, um, but it looks like a number and then a colon and then the text and then backslash, backslash n which is an enter. Um, so what this actually looks like in a text file format is this. So this is generated automatically by the program. You don't even need to go in and touch it. If you wanted to, you could edit a text file and push it to the processor via FTP. I would recommend, what I always do when I'm using this kind of module is I'll, I'll run it first and have it generate the file so I know what it's named and where it's supposed to be. Then I'll just edit that file in a text editor. You can use something like FileZilla or an FTP client to get in into your processor and put the file where it needs to be. So this is basically the meat of it. Um, it's writing that, um, let's just see here. So this is the read part. It's looking for the colon and then assigning it a number. I've kind of made this pretty basic where if you have, if you put a one colon at the bottom, it's going to read the last one. Like it'll read the first one, but it'll find another one so it will overwrite that. Since this is a simple module, I'm just ignoring that for now. Um, I don't think it's a big deal for this type of a module. Um, on the update, we're basically checking, first of all, to see if, if you're feeding it a blank, a valid index or valid entry index. If you don't put a, a 1 between 0 and 20, 21, greater than 0 and less than 21, so 1 to 20, um, it won't run this block of code. And basically it starts opening the file and it'll go through all the files and go through all the entries. So the way this is actually working is it's keeping keeping track of the the entries in local memory. And that's G custom text, so global custom text inside the module. And it's just writing them all out into the file. And that's Basically, yeah, there's a little bit of playing around with it to, to make it happen. But like I said, I'll include this module because it's kind of, it's a little bit hard to get your head wrapped around. I'm actually having trouble as I go back into it. It's been a while since I wrote this and seeing what I actually did. So basically, it works and it works quite well. One of the things with, with the way that I've done it is if you don't have that carriage return at the end, you're going to have problems because it's not going to, not going to read the file properly. You shouldn't really need to get into the file. Anyway, I'm Dustin Berg with ProAVSchool.com and hopefully you found this video useful. If you're looking for more Crestron tutorials and pro audiovisual information, please be sure to go to ProAVSchool.com and sign up for our mailing list where you'll get notifications of new content. We also post on YouTube and on Facebook 